So what I'm understanding here is that we are evolved in order to have fitness gains, not to see reality. That's right. That's right. And, and so an example of that just intuitively would be just if you're playing a video game, right? If you're playing a video game, say, um, I, I like to use the example of, say, a, a, a car racing game, maybe Grand Theft Auto or something like that, but maybe souped up to be a virtual reality multiplayer kind of thing. Um, in, in that case, I mean, the world that you're directly seeing in which you see, you know, a red Ferrari and a green Mustang and you see a steering wheel and, and gas pedal and brakes and so forth the dashboard on your, 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 your ride. All of that, of course, is just a virtual reality. It's, it's in that whole setup, you know, that, in that metaphor, the, the reality would be some supercomputer somewhere that you, that you don't see. So it's really diodes and resistors, voltages and magnetic fields and some supercomputer. That's the reality that all the players in this multiplayer game are interacting with. But, but you know, they could be eight-year-old kids they have no idea what, what voltages and magnetic fields are. They, even if you told them, they couldn't understand and they can play the game. So what they're doing is they're using this VR interface, which is all, you know, eye candy, you know, red Mustangs or whatever it might be and steering wheels. Uh, they're using all this eye candy to control a really complicated reality that they, they uh, maybe couldn't understand or don't believe in. And they don't need to know about it to, to actually master the game. And, and you conversely, uh, suppose you know about the reality and you, you can actually toggle the voltages in the computer. So you can actually, in some sense, manipulate reality directly. Could you beat someone in Grand Theft Auto who's actually just using the interface? I doubt it. Toggle as fast as you can. You're not going to be able to, to you know, win the game. And so that gives you an intuition about what's going on with evolution. Essentially, it's given us perceptions of space and time and objects like cars and trees, the moon, your own body, your face. These are all just icons. Even your own body, your own face mm. is just an icon in a virtual reality that, that's been evolved by natural selection from this point of view. And it's there to hide the truth. You don't need to know the truth to play the game of life successfully, which in this case, you know, is living long enough to reproduce and pass on your genes to the next generation is the story in evolution by natural selection. And so just like in the video game, to play the game, you don't need to know reality. In the same thing in life, to play the game of life, in other words, living long enough to reproduce, uh, is you don't need to know the truth. And so evolution gave us senses that we have to take seriously, right? They're there to keep us alive long enough to reproduce. And then they dump you, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's why we get old and get cancer and so forth as we get older, right? You've, you've gone past the time of reproduction and there's no selection pressures to keep you alive. But so, so they're there to keep you alive and win the game, but not to show you the truth. But we have to take them seriously because they are there to keep us alive. And we've been programmed by natural selection to just assume that they're literally true. We, we get programmed before we're of reason, at the age of reason, to even argue about it. By the time we're about four months of age, um, child psychologists have, have discovered, we, we get saddled with the belief that they call object permanence. Objects really exist. The, what I see is the truth, and it's there even when I don't look. So, so you know, we're, we're, you know evolution has it's really done a number on us, it, but, but the number was just to let us play the game of life successfully long enough to reproduce. So it gave us a virtual reality that's not the truth. It's completely the very language of space and time and physical objects like neurons and brains is the wrong language. You could not. It's not like we're getting, you get the shape of that apple a little bit wrong or the distance to that rock a little bit off. I'm saying something much, much deeper. I'm saying the very language of space and time and objects and colors and shapes is the wrong language. You could not use that language to form any true statements about objective reality. It's the wrong language. Can't be done. So evolution gave us the wrong language for the truth, but the right language for perceptions that guide actions that keep us alive. And then it saddled us at about four months of age and from then on with the deeply held belief that we're seeing the truth. And so even very, very smart scientists, I mean, it's very hard to shake that belief. I mean, you've had it since you were four months old. You've never questioned it. 
And science has worked so well for the last few centuries on the assumption that space and time is fundamental, that physical objects are fundamental. So science has been extremely successful so far. And so there's been very little impetus for us to question this until recently with new advances in physics and so forth. We're realizing we do have to let go.